Adam. Who's that, Jason? Jason. Hello. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Fine. I'm sorry I'm really late here, yeah, but... Uh, That's all right. I don't know what the time is. It's 25 to 6. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. How are you doing, eh? I'm okay, man. Congratulations. I'm in the newspaper world. Oh, it's hellish, you know. It's a dirty job, but I'm doing it. Yeah, you're good at it, though. Oh, well. You're good at being dirty. <laughs> it's a good thing your name isn't Toast Ginger. Why? <laughs> because I would have spelled it wrong. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but I didn't, I swear, I know, you know, but anyway. Yeah, we know. Yes, but John, I've been asking you, I haven't been responding to that. Yes. I have yours and put on the scribble marks about it. Have you listened to it? No, no, no of course I have been. What do you think? I think it's brilliant. Do you? Yeah, I think production actually over, overshadows the, with the music there, but, uh, you know, what can we do? You know? <laughs> the production overshadows the music? <laughs> All right, that is it. <laughs> no, <Your> <laughs> no, honestly, I, uh, if I have to compare it, which people will probably do for the sake of comparing it, um, you can't actually, uh, you know, as far as the EP is concerned. Um, I just think it's an extension of the EP. Uh, you know, when listening to it, it's like everything that was that I needed to hear but didn't on the, on the EP, I now have it on the album. Oh, great. So it's great. Yeah. And, uh, to say, but the, but the, the artwork is something to be desired. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. I do. I must admit it's uh, okay. been down still. But now, last time when I spoke to you, you didn't have too much to say to me because you didn't didn't really know. So, yeah. so, so now that you do, now you have to share your pearls of wisdom with me because, uh, you know, uh, that's what I do and that's what you do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So now, tell me, okay? <clears throat> We, we did speak about, um, obviously, the recording side of it, that that was um, a lot of fun to do, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, but sort of give us a sort of a, a rundown on sort of the thought process with the, with, with the tracks. You you had you had quite a bit of time to put the songs together. Uh, and when we spoke, you said the songs didn't go through much of a change. Why, why do you think that was? Are you sort of, have you found your niche, as it were? Well, what happened was, um it's like, you know, Mark joined the band about just under a year ago. Yeah. Just as Pickles was being released, basically. And um, all the songs that are on the album, with the exception of Bob, the live track, mm. all the other songs were written with him. Yeah. So all those songs were written within the space of about 10 months. Mm. And then put straight down onto the CD. And when we did pre-production with Reggie, we did change the arrangement of the songs a little bit, but nothing hectic. Just like maybe bringing the chorus in sooner or changing that bit or the rhythm of that, you know, nothing hectic. And then we just put them down and what we wanted to do is you basically play them live like we do, like we have been playing them live for the last year. Get them into the studio, play them live and then start messing around with different sounds, different textures. And that's why I think one of the things I like about the album is that even though there is a lot of, there's a lot of things going on in some parts that we don't do live, the actual, the whole essence of the song is still there. Yes. Which is what I like. That's why we didn't go over the top with production. We didn't, we could have put in, we actually thought about putting loads of stuff in, but then at the end of the day, we wanted the song to be the strongest thing. Mm-hmm. And I think we have done that. But still keep it interesting by putting in little, experimenting with little trumpet sounds. And, mm, because yeah, and stuff. because there, there is a lot of that. I mean, obviously this is, it's a it's a it's a happy album. It's a, you know it's it's not well, it's not, not that it's meant not to be taken seriously, but it, it basically I mean when you hear it I mean from say from from the great artwork right through to obviously to the tracks it was it was obviously a, a good time for the band. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's actually the best we've ever been. It's, I mean we've been to a lot of member changes and things, and now the last year we've written all those songs. We're in a situation now where it was time to get into the studio and to put them all down to show everyone what we've been doing for the last year. Right. And I think the songs really do portray what we're about now. Mm-hmm. That's why we're so happy with the sound of it. Right. That's why Reggie helps us so much as well. Yeah, now he's By gone. getting that sound down. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, to say, with the, with working with, with, with uh, the likes of Reggie, what was, what did you actually glean from that? That must have been sort of a great experience, I think, for him as well as for yourselves. But oh, it was great. I mean, the whole 
I mean, since we've, we've joined the music industry, you have, when you say the word producer, when I first started music, Reggie, to me, was my definition of what producer was then. Yeah. Now, I thought a producer should be the kind of person that you give him an idea, you tell him what you want to hear, and he will get that sound from you. Right. And that's what Reggie did. That's what, to me, a producer shouldn't be someone, although he was a lot of the times, and it, it did help where he sort of suggests things. Right. It really does help. You do need that extra input, almost like a fifth member. Mm-hmm. And but I think essentially a producer should be the kind of person who listens more than puts in his own thing, rather listens to what you want and then goes out of his way to try and get that sound for you. Right, right. And that's what he did for us so well, which is great. Right. And if you sort of sum the album up as, as a whole, how do you, um, how, how would you sort of describe the album? Um, I think, like you say, it's a very fun album. It's easy listening music. But, on the other hand, if you actually sit in a dark room with headphones, there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's, it's not just sort of a, oh, that's a nice song, oh, that's a nice song. Mm-hmm. No, like, but that is, it is very accessible because the songs are easy listening. But, that, on the other hand, there's a lot of stuff, you put a lot of work into the more subconscious side, if you like. Right. Right. We've actually put a lot of, um, we've spent a lot of time in making it interesting. That's why we've got the little bits in between. Yeah, yeah. All the funny things that happen. You know the last track, What yes. the Onions? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Some guy was telling us yesterday, he put it on in his car. Uh-huh. And the beginning, you know, we've got a very, very quiet guitar track as the song starts. Yes. He turned his system up full because uh-huh. I couldn't hear it. And then when the drums came in, the speakers fell out of the back of his car. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. It actually fell out of their little hole. Fell out of the hole. Yeah, the boot. Well, that's it. Yeah, one to talk up. Sometimes it doesn't happen to my half-out, and then it's just fun. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you should put a warning sticker on this. Yeah, it could get sued. <laughs> no, I think it's just a, it's a, it's a risk of listening to good music, you see. Yeah. There are hazards, yeah, there are hazards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there are no explicit lyrics, but just be careful of you know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but now, as I said, you, you've now got to the point that you've released your, your first full album. Mm. Um, do you sort of feel that you're sort of in a, in, a, in a place now where you can actually, I don't know, sort of sit back, just sell yourself better that you now have a full album to go out and uh, you know, sort of share it with, with the world kind of thing? I mean, as much as the EP was an introduction to who you were, Mm. Uh, you know, is, is, is this now the, the wider audience, sort of, you know, Big Bang Baby type of it? Well, I think, yeah, I think the EP was good as far as awareness goes, getting the name Amersham out. So people actually know, oh wow, there is a band called Amersham. And they have um, had a few songs on the radio, so we do know some of their songs. Yes. But now with this album, it's sort of, the whole package, you know, now they know exactly what we're about when they listen to the album. Yeah. And what we want to do with this is we will promote it um, as much as we can in this country. We've already got four tours planned. Yes, that's right. Today. Before the end of the year. Yeah, it's Which is a lot. Quite ridiculous, actually. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what we do. I mean, it's sort of, we're a working band. We love touring. Yeah, yeah. And once we finish that, next year we'll do the varsity circuit. Yes. In February, when all, all the rags and all that stuff. And then we're actually looking at going to Australia. Australia? Yeah, we're looking at no, no. Australian release. No, no, no. Um, well, the, due to the fact that uh, Reggie's there? And it was, it, initially yes, but also now um, BMG Africa. Yes. Um, they have, I think they sent Pickled over to Australia and they were interested. Right. And they basically said as soon as the full album comes out, we will release it over here. Oh, right. So they put it both. And we will stay with Reggie and Reggie's girlfriend will coordinate the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So have you, have you actually got that commitment from, from BMG? Yeah, we have. It's, it's looking good. very good. You know, it's, not, it's never 100%. No, no, no. But it does look very good. Right, right. So you, we'll look to go over there probably around April. Right, well, you, you're obviously sort of aware of that in doing the album. So did you, did you sort of try and create a feel for the album that would make it accessible to an international audience, you know, when, when putting it all together? No, we didn't. Oh. Um, we actually, we didn't think 
it's been, it took two months to record it. And those two months, our headspace was just in the studio with the songs. We didn't think about anything really. You know, we didn't think, oh God, what would happen if we did that? What would people think if we did that? You know, we just sort of, the five of us just got in that studio and it was just non-stop, non-stop um, inspiration. It was just creative thinking the whole time. Mm. And it was really, really good for all of us to get away from the outside world, if you like, mm. and just to get our headspace into doing this album. Mm. And then at the end of it, when it was finished, even when it was finished, mastered, when it was mastered, mm. we all sat back and then listened to it, and then we started going, oh God, what about that? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's done, and we're happy with it. That's, so, that's the way we wanted to do it from the first place. Yeah, so I know you, you sort of uh, dashed about with the title for the album. Uh, obviously you have one. What, yeah. what was the actual difficulty in choosing in coming up with, uh, with the time for it? Yeah, funny enough, that was the most difficult part of the whole album. Yeah. was thinking about the fucking time. <laughs> it was, I don't know what the, what the problem was. It was just sort of a... I think, like I said, because our headspaces were with the album, yeah. the last week or two, people started saying, so what the hell are we going to call it? Mm. And then it was like, oh shit, yeah, we have to think of a title, we have to do the artwork. Mm. And I think that's why, it wasn't really that long, but it was just because it was in, we were so rushed. Sure. Because we were, you know, we were in another world for a while. Mm. And Wearing Thin is obviously one of the tracks. Yes. And I think Clint, our manager, came up with the whole idea of having us actually wearing thin on the album cover. Yes. But that was changed. The initial album cover was, you know the back of the album? Yes. We were all very fat. Yes. The front was going to be the opposite. Oh, right. Exactly as facing forward, but then... Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, but that was changed. We had the cover, the, the cover now yeah. was actually inside the CD. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we just changed that around. And it's, you can still get the idea from the picture inside. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And we kept wearing thin because we thought, no, it's a cool name. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the, obviously the, the, the logo is, is, has a, a very sort of English um, sort of undertone to it, colour-wise. Was that sort of an obvious one, obviously based on, on roots and so on? No, that was also a mistake. Because <laughs> what happened there, the head-on design, Yeah. that we didn't even ask them to put the A behind. What happened, they brought, the first cover they brought was exactly like it is now, but without the A behind. Right. And then they just threw in this other one, which was the A. Yeah. But it was still connected to the N, so it looked like Amersham was going on right. up to the right. Yes, yes, yes. And we thought, that looks really cool. Right. So we said, keep that. And then when they brought back the final, they cut the M off. Yes. And that's we got the logo, which is now our new logo. It's just the A. Yes. And that was a total mistake, <laughs> which is a weird thing. Nothing was planned on it. It was just, okay, cool, leave it. That's sort of indicative of the album, I think, in certain respects, as, yeah, exactly, as, yeah. as, as the songs came together as well, you know, because I yeah. that was pretty much, uh, as much as you, you know, you structured your songs and, and, and worked on them, I mean, I think, you know, especially with, with all the interesting bits that you got in between, it's sort of almost a, it's not a trial and error, but it's it's good trial and error, you know. Yeah, it's, that's why I think it's, it'll remain fresh for a long time, mm. because a lot of the things that you're hearing, and a lot of the things you see on the cover, were all either mistakes or very spontaneous, mm. and they were just kept. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a few of the songs, um, Matchbox is one, Mr. Fussbot is another way. I, I actually had flu, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do a vocal that day, so I said, what I'll do, I'll go in, I'll do a guide vocal, and then I can correct it at a later stage. And I walked into the booth, I sang it once, walked out, and that was the vocal that stayed. Jeez. It was just like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. right, that was okay. That's that mm. It wasn't sort of okay, let's we take that and do all this stuff yeah, and cut it all up. Do the whole thing, yeah. Mm. But now, and do, do you find from, to say, from, from when you began, obviously when you did pick up, you, you obviously had a lot of influences, you know, guiding you, you know, to, to do the kind of music you, you did um, and do. Did you find sort of in putting this album together that you sort of thought more independently about, you know, based on, on your time in? Yeah, and as being a part of that show, mm. uh, was it more sort of a, a personal, you know, more artistic in the sense that it was your, more your creation than, say, influences of other artists and other and the likes that you, you know, that you always sort of liked and supported? Yeah, um, 
I think it is. I think because now the songs that are on this album, the four of us wrote together. And as you can pickled, a lot of them were songs that I wrote myself. And I think now that the four of us are writing together, the sound will obviously change because it's not just one guy going home writing a song and saying, here's the song, let's play it. Mm. Now it's four of us sitting in a rehearsal room just putting down whatever we want to play on our individual instruments. Yeah. And then me or, or Mark sometimes taking it home and writing lyrics to it. Mm. And I think in that way, our sound will be more original mm. and also our individual inputs are more... Um, rather than being influenced from outside sources, we are more trying to put onto CD what we want to express more than anything. Right. I think that's why the sound is a little bit different, and I think that's why most of it, besides Bob, because Bob was the only song that we didn't write together. Right. Bob was written probably geez, about three years ago, maybe even longer. And that's the only song that sort of, to me, if I had to pull out one song which wasn't as much as the others, it would be Bob mm-hmm. because of that, because Nathan and I wrote it quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh, <clears throat> sort of a, an obvious song, which is your favorite track? Um, I think it'll be... Yeah, 18 Ways to Live Your Life. Wow. I don't know. I think because of the way we wrote it, uh-huh. it was um, Mark was late for rehearsal right. one day, right. and I decided that I wanted to play drums. So I was on the drum kit, Finn had my acoustic guitar, and Nathan was playing bass, and we just then started playing this ridiculous, corny um, little riff on the guitar. So I started playing this really, really corny drum beat, mm-hmm. and we sort of got every single cliche we could. Mm-hmm. But very naturally, it wasn't sort of let's put this in, it was just, you know, Sometimes you do something that is very, very natural, but you, it's been done a billion times before. Sure. It, it makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. So we were doing that, and then I came up with that ridiculous melody, you know, very sort of... Na, 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 mm. like really cheesy. Mm-hmm. And I just loved it, and I went home, I wrote these sort of very, very... The, the basic theme of the song is how the Mariah carries of the world and all that sort of... Mm in their songs tell you how to live your life. Right. And I just put, the song is basically about how we live our lives. Mm. And it's sort of a rip off of the whole, do this and search for the hero inside yourself. Mm. Mm. And, that's, mm. Mm. and that's why I think, because the song is so natural like that, I think that's why it's in favor. Mm. 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 And then do you think that, uh, that, that radio and uh, obviously the, your fans out there are going to embrace, embrace this album? I don't know. It's something I'm not having sleepless nights about, but it's something the last few days I have been thinking about quite a lot. I don't know how they're going to take it. Because if they see it for how it is, which is very tongue-in-cheek and it's very, it's very, uh, you know, it's what we do. It's it's how we play our music. And if they see it for that, then I think they will enjoy it. And if they look for um, the entertainment value in it, where there's a lot of things going on and it's, it's fun, you know, fun album sure. to say. Sure. If they see it for what it is, I think they'll enjoy it a lot. Right. You know, there's no hidden meaning and all that. No. Then no. this is how it's a feel like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm ashamed as they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Uh, Adam, I want to ask you one last favor, if I may. Yes. Um, I'm going to run this on my show, thanks. Um, can you do the right thing for me? Sure. Okay, so the name of the show is The Cutting Edge. The Cutting Edge. Yeah, it's very cliche, you know, kind of, kind of <laughs> What can I do, you know? That's good. Yeah. Okay. There we go, so whenever you're ready, just stretch your stuff. If I say you're listening to Jason Curtis? Well, no, you can just say you're listening to The Cutting Edge. You can just say hi. This is okay, cool. Adam from Amersham. Okay. This is Adam from Amersham, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Thank you. Okay. I don't want to say congratulations. Um, Thank you. I heard my whistle on the live chat, so... Did I, you? Yes, I did. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you you know, I mean, you, you did basically credit, credit us, us during our times, so, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm still waiting for a personal credit, you know, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Break my balls, Jax, and this is what I get. It's okay. <laughs> you, know, you know where our heart is. 
Yes, I know. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's what work is. <laughs> no. Also, Jason, before you go, yes. I have to give you a phone number. Yes. And you're going to phone Garth now, aren't you? Yes. But it's a bit of a change of tone. You're now going to speak to Mike. I thought so. Okay. Yes. His number is 478 Right. 3118. Yes, there we go. Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, you see, I mean, talk about networking between bands. Yeah, I know. She, you prostitute. We spoke about this before, didn't we? <laughs> we did. Lady prostitute. Absolutely. Um, oh, that's great. I mean, <laughs> we have no shame, otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we're doing, you know? Me either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a second. Congratulations for this. Um, I want to do this piece for the Saturday style, so I've got enough of this, and I'll just let Nancy know what's and when. Um, but it, it'll probably be in the next two or three weeks. Oh, great stuff. Right. And thanks again for everything you've done. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we need to do more. That's yeah, it. we do. Yeah.